I've been using different types of batteries to supply my breadboard with the voltage level I want to test my circuits but of course it is better to have a vari variable DC power supply for testing so I decided to build my own one to use it instead of batteries so if you are like me and cannot afford a commercial variable DC power supply this video is for you first of all the budget of this project is almost one dollar since all you need is an LM317 voltage regulator, some resistors, a potentiometer, diode, two capacitors, LEDs, and push button. This project contains both variable DC voltage regulator and an LED voltage level indicator. For the first part, the input pin is connected to a shunt 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, and the output pin is connected to a shunt 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Make sure that these caps are rated for a higher voltage than you will be dealing with. Actually, using these caps are optional, but they are recommended to use by the AM317 datasheet to make sure that the output voltage is stable. To determine the output voltage, you can use this formula. In my case, I'm using 220 ohm for R1 and the potentiometer with a value of 2.5 kilo ohm for R2. The anode of this diode is connected to the output pin of the LM317 and its cathode is connected to the input pin. It's used to provide a discharging path for C2. For the voltage level indicator, I designed it in a way that the LEDs turn on only when pressing on the push button. In my design, I'm using 5 LEDs with 3 different colors. The reason of this will be explained in a minute. Remember that knowing the forward voltage of each LED color is so important. Since when an LED lights up, it will indicate that the output voltage has reached its threshold voltage. So I did a simple experiment for this using this simple setup. In this setup, I am using 5 volt supply with 220 ohm resistor series with 22 ohm resistor. So around 20 milliamps will pass through the 5 millimeter LED. And I took the reading of the voltage across it and recorded these readings. From the recorded values, I noted that the green, yellow, and red LEDs almost have the same threshold voltage, which is 2 volt. So I connected 5 LEDs in series so they can measure voltage up until 10 or 11 volts. A shunt 10 kilo ohm resistor is used after each LED to limit the current drawn by the voltage indicator for protection. The equivalent resistance of the voltage level indicator circuit is 2 kilo ohm. So if the LM317 outputs 12 volt, the voltage level indicator load will draw a current of 6 milliamps, so all my LEDs can run safely. Before starting constructing the circuit on a breadboard, make sure to put a heat sink on your LM317, so it doesn't melt your breadboard. The reason of that is the LM317 is a linear voltage regulator, and the power dissipated into heat in the LM317 can be found from this formula. Note that as the difference between V in and V out gets larger, the power transferred into heat gets larger too. For example, if your input is coming from a 12 volt power supply and you want to run a motor at 5 volt and your motor draws 800 milliamps, the power transferred into heat in the LM317 will be 5.6 watt. So it is a mandatory to have a heat sink on your LM317. For the input supply, I am using a power adapter that outputs 12 volt DC and has 5.5 2.1 mm jack DC power connector, which is very common. Even my laptop charger has the same connector. And I also have a socket for that to connect it to my breadboard. After setting everything up on a breadboard, I tested the circuit and it actually worked as expected. But I noticed the maximum voltage was 11 volt, not 12 volt. And this one voltage drop was caused actually 
by the internal resistance and the NPN junction between the input and output pin of the RM317. Anyways, the voltage level indicator circuit was tested and it worked very fine. Note that the output voltage won't go below 1.25 volt due to the reference voltage between the adjust pin and the output pin of the LM317. You can actually use this setup to control the speed of a motor, but make sure that you have a diode parallel to the motor to avoid any reverse voltage at the output, which may damage your circuit. After making sure that everything worked fine, I transferred the circuit into a prep board so I can use it permanently. So after soldering all the necessary components, I checked the connections using the continuity property of my multimeter so I don't burn anything when running the circuit. At the end, the circuit looked like this. And at the back, it looked like this which reflects my bad soldering skills. Well, anyways, the circuit was tested and worked as expected. The good thing about this design is that it's universal that is it can work with different types of power adapters even it worked with my laptop charger which can supply up to 19 volts at the end of the day i consider this project as a success due to its simplicity low cost and it's being useful this is my first video on youtube related to electronics if you like it please like share subscribe and let me know your opinion in the comment section below, since any support of you will motivate me to work on and record more useful projects. Thank you and see you in the coming video.